Hello and welcome to Best Talk. This is a program which we will discuss on matters concerning the national key economic areas and companies that involves directly or indirectly with the Economic Transformation Program. And I am your host, Suryati Sanusi. And for this week, we will be discussing on the healthcare sector. But before that, let's take a look at how the market did for the week just Right, thanks for staying with us on BizTalk. If you have any comments, you can email us at biztalk at panama-tv.com or you can tweet us at biztalk502 or you can call us right now at 0326-937008. Right, for this week, we are talking about pursuing generics export opportunities and to discuss more on this matter, we have Mr. David Ho Su Sun, the Managing Director of Hovit Berhat, as our guest for this week. And uh, a short introduction on uh, Mr. David Ho. David graduated with a Master of Pharmacy from University of Otago, New Zealand, and he worked as a research pharmacist of Wyeth, United Kingdom, and before returning to Malaysia in 1980 to assist his father, Dr. Ho, in the herbal tea business. He successfully transformed the Ho Yan Ho herbal tea business into a pharmaceutical manufacturing company, a public listed company on the main board at Bursa Malaysia. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Let's uh, talk about uh, uh, Hovit first. Can you tell us a little bit the history on Hovit Berhad? Well, Hovit started by, by my father mm -hmm. as a herbal tea company. Right. He practically sold cups of herbal tea uh, tea store in the beginning mm -hmm. and that did well so then he packaged the tea into dry tea package right. and sold it in Ipoh at first and then slowly uh, throughout Malaysia so in the in, you know, just after the war mm -hmm. he, transportation wasn't so good right so he used to bicycle right uh, in Ipoh and outside S of Ipoh to, uh, to promote his tea uh -huh. so he bike as far as Kuala Lumpur Penang uh, to promote the tea uh -huh. and then after one year or so he managed to save enough money to buy his first car you know so that was quite a big deal In then he can days, then yeah. promote it further right. and then later on the van right. and so then in the 50s, right. there was a big flu epidemic right. and our tea was the sort of practically the only thing that could help right. and after that it became like a household name right, in Malaysia right. amongst the as you the Chinese community in Malaysia and Singapore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the the company was called Hoi and Ho. Mm -hmm. Basically, it had one product, the herbal tea. Right. And uh, so I went to study as a young boy mm -hmm. in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and I finished. And then I went to my actually my passion was more in research, uh -huh. and I ended up working for Wyeth as a research pharmacist. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of years mm -hmm. in a multinational environment, I felt that uh, I could better serve mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Right. So we came back in about 1979, 1980, mm -hmm. and we started to develop a so-called pharmaceutical business from the herbal tea business. Right. So over the last 20 years or so, mm -hmm. we have uh, changed the company from a one product herbal tea mm -hmm. uh, company from Ho and Ho right. to now Hovit, uh, which we have something like 400 products right. and all developed on our own. And uh, the products are not only sold in Malaysia, mm -hmm. but through to about 40 countries. Mm -hmm. So we have a big portfolio of uh, drugs. A lot of them are generic drugs, mm -hmm. about 70%. About 30% of them are OTC mm -hmm. products. So uh, yes, OTC you know, means? Over the counter, that means okay. things that you can buy over the counter without prescription. Right. Okay. okay um, and recently, our best stock journalist Putri Mahira went to Ipoh to visit your plant. So let's take a look at the package. Listed on the main board of Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange since 2006, Harvard Burhardt spells the familiarity and quality among healthcare providers. Harvard Group's pharmaceutical division manufactures and markets more than 350 different types of products. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit Harvard's plant in Chemo, Perak to witness myself how Harvard's products are produced. Harvard's manufacturing facilities and practices in respect of its pharmaceutical products conform to the good laboratory practice standards. 
The production department specifies highly on cleanliness and hygiene, and the contamination prevention alert is executed to strive for zero tolerance. There are four major processes in the production department, which are dispensing, granulation and mixing, compression, encapsulation, coating and packing. During the dispensing stage, raw materials are weighed according to formula and production schedule. The next step is granulation. The dispensed raw materials will load into the high-speed mixer granulator for granulation purpose. During the mixing process, the dried granules is sieved through the vibrator shaker, while the coarse granules retained on the shaker mesh is milled with high-speed granulator. The granules is then mixed homogeneously with double cone blender. The next process is compression. The granule is filled into the dye through feeder. The upper punch when lower punch with the applied force will compress the granules in tablet form. To produce capsules, encapsulation process is conducted. Granule is filled into the plunger carrier through hopper. The slug formed will fill into the capsules and discharge out via outlet to capsule the duster and finally into the drum. This is the coating room. The purposes of the coating are for branding, finally from the environment, product uniformity, improve mechanical strength, mask the bad taste, is swallowing and control drug release. Finally, the capsules are packed. For blister pack machine, the tablets are fed into feeder tube via hopper. The tablets are then set into the form pocket pass through camera for defects detection. The blister is then sealed, embossed, cut and then passed to the other side for manual pack or going through auto machine. After going a few stages of processes, this is what the finished product looks like and it is now ready for the market. The plus towards continuous innovation lies in Hobbit's strong R&D capabilities. Harvard has developed technologies that are patented both locally and internationally. Transcending ethical drugs and supplements, Harvard's R&D also encompasses personal care and consumer products. Harvard has filed patents in several countries and conducted numerous clinical and efficacy studies in several universities around the globe. Placing a high emphasis on quality, Harvard's quality control laboratories are well equipped with modern and sophisticated instruments for the analysis of finished products, raw materials and packaging materials. With decades of experience in the pharmaceutical industry, quality is of utmost importance for Hobbit Berhad and to ensure the improvement of its products, research and development is continuously conducted. That was Putri at uh, your plant in Ipoh. Could you tell us a little bit more on uh, Hovit and the plant there? Yes, of course, what you see is our latest plant. Mm -hmm. You know, from the 80s, we have built many, about four or five facilities. Mm -hmm. So we have dedicated facilities for uh, penicillin products, right. for uh, liquids like syrups, cough syrups, mm -hmm. uh, soft gels, uh, and what they call cephalosporin product, right. and herbal Product. Right. And what you saw actually is our de new newest uh, block, which is capsule and tablet uh, facilities. Which is in Ipo, which is every which, yeah, which is in Chimo where you went. Right. But we have the old facilities in our uh, Jalan Kuala Kangsa area. Right. Yeah. Could you tell us uh, more on one of your product, which I have some interest in? It is called Toko Triono. Yes. Okay. That is one of our, of course. Uh, big potential product right. because we've been working on this for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, through our subsidiary Carotech, we first of all developed a process mm -hmm. to extract 
the tocotrienol mm -hmm. from palm oil. Tocotrienol is vitamin E uh, in the palm oil, mm -hmm. but the vitamin E is very different from the normal vitamin E that you get in the market. Most of the vitamin E in the market is sucophoral. Right. The tocotrienol is different in a sense it has other uh, properties that is very different from tocopherol. Mm -hmm. One of the properties that we have now very much focused on is in neuron protection or right. protection of uh, nerve cells, in especially the in the brain. Right. So we, uh, we have done six, seven years mm -hmm. of research now uh, from cell line to small animal to big animal and we are in the clinics in Malaysia mm -hmm. and in the US to testing using stroke as a model right. to, to test that if you have took small amount of tocotrienol in your brain, mm -hmm. and if you have a stroke, your, your damage in your brain will be much less. Right. So that is what we are doing now. Right. And the, the, the trial actually is uh, completed. We are in the process of writing up the paper to mm -hmm. be published. So mm -hmm. hopefully by next year, right. we could have some good news for, for the world. Because at the moment, you know, when you have stroke, there's no drug. Right. And if you can have a mm -hmm. damage to the brain, mm -hmm. it's going to be a huge contribution to to stroke, right. uh, potential stroke patients. But it, it is available for us to get it from a pharmacy yes, right now. You can get it in the pharmacy. It's called Tocovid, mm -hmm. and uh, we have multiple patents mm -hmm. on this. We have uh, extraction patents. Right. We have formulation patents that improve the absorption of tocotrienol by mm. almost 300%. Right. So it's a very, uh, this product has a lot of science behind it. Right. There's a lot of excitement in, in the market right. for this product, and okay. we are looking forward to really. Uh, Get publishing, into this. Uh, publishing the, the clinical work. Right. Another area that we are very, very excited also, it has shown to be very potential for mm -hmm. liver disease. Mm -hmm. And also, we are just finished a study on fatty liver. Right. And it will be published also before the end of this year. Right. Uh, so it's already approved uh, and final draft is submitted to publication. Okay. So that is also a very potential for liver health. So same product for two indications. Both of these indications has no drug mm -hmm. and sufferer of liver disease or stroke actually have no drug to look forward to. True. And if this is proven to be good in human, it, it can be, prevent it. Yeah. yeah, it would be a big uh, breakthrough. Health. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. We'll take a short break right now. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk more with uh, Mr. David Ho on uh, Bistock. Stay tuned. Right, thanks for staying with us on Bistock. If you have any comments, you can email us at bistock at pranama-tv.com or you can tweet us at bistock502 or you can call us at 0326-937008. Right, let's go to the NKEA, where, which is... Uh, the EPP3, Malaysia is pursuing generic opportunities. So what do you think Malaysia is focusing on this? I think Malaysia is, is the right to focus on generic mm -hmm. as a focus for healthcare mm -hmm. because uh, in, in pharmaceuticals, there are two avenues. You can go generic or you can go the uh, patented route. Now, to, to go the patented route requires huge investment. Mm -hmm. You're talking about billions and billions of uh, money to, to develop a new chemical entity, right. put it through the uh, test process, mm -hmm. and then ended up with a, a drug that is maybe some re uh, breakthrough in treatment. Right. Now, probably course, with side effect. Yeah. If yeah. you can get it, of course, it's a big blockbuster. If right. not, uh, you you don't get anything because right. if you have one or two cases of side effect, you may have to withdraw the the product. Mm -hmm. So even many multinational company are struggling with. Uh, new chemical entity mm -hmm. bringing them to the market now and even them uh, most multinational today have an arm in generics because generics is growing at about 30 percent right pharma company are growing less than 10 percent right so you can imagine you know uh, generic are running almost three times faster than the uh, the patented drugs mm -hmm. and Malaysia being a developing country I doubt we have the resources or the money to take the kind of risk to do, develop new chemical entity. Mm -hmm. So since the generic market has such big opportunity, mm -hmm. it's easier to get on. Therefore, it's a good strategy right. to focus on generic, to, to take us to a, a level whereby we have grown to a certain size, mm -hmm. then we can go back and do a new chemical entity, for example. Right. Yeah. Okay. Could you tell us your collaboration with Winthrop Pharmaceuticals? Yeah. Winthrop, of course, is a subsidiary of Sanofi, mm -hmm. a very big 
MMC company mm -hmm. uh, from uh, used to be from France, but I guess today they are international. They have many products in their portfolio mm -hmm. of patent product, mm -hmm. but they also have a desire to go into generics, and they created a, a subsidiary called Wintrop, mm -hmm. which is a generic uh, doing generic products. Mm -hmm. Now there are very little presence in Malaysia, right. and they know that we have big presence and. So we got together mm -hmm. and have discussion. Why don't we collaborate? We have excess capacity, mm -hmm. and we could license some of our products mm -hmm. to uh, Vintroff, right? And they could also license some of their product to us. Vice versa. And mm -hmm. uh, things worked out well. The okay. discussion went right. well, and uh, we proceeded to you know license four products to them as mm -hmm. a beginning, mm -hmm. and that's how we caught the attention of the NKEA committee, mm -hmm. and they liked what they see, mm -hmm. uh, if we can do this well, potentially it could work very well so that we could have a multinational and local uh, joint uh, sort of uh, development of a generic uh, uh, business. And it has started and we already licensed four products to Wintrop, right. so we are waiting for more products from Wintrop to be licensed to us. So we think that if this works well, it could be a win-win for both companies uh, coming into Malaysia because we, we are allowed Wintrop to get into Malaysia market, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it also allows us to also maybe tap into some of Wintrop's market. True. Okay, and making generic drugs is not without you know touching some serious issues, especially on health. So, uh, Bestock journalist uh, Kairol went to get some feedback from professionals. Let's take a look. Each day, there are new ethical drugs and dietary supplement of patterns are being developed. But how do we know their qualities? Are they being certified? Let's ask the expert on the subject matter. The pharmaceutical industry has got two types of medications, one of which are patented products. That means they are research products. They have gone, undergone many years of study and research to develop new drugs. So these are what we call patented products. And these drugs are usually produced by multinational companies who've got a very strong research base. At the moment, the Malaysian generic manufacturing is also making great leaps and bounds in progressing towards a very high quality um, form of producing drugs. So we call this the generic manufacturing industry, which means that once a patent has expired, the Malaysian companies will do the necessary research to ensure that generic products are produced at very high quality and matches the standards that is required for the general public to consume. The general public must be made aware that first, when they, when they choose medicine, they must walk into a licensed premise. You know? They must walk into a premise that has been registered and carries a license that can sell medicines. And that, in many cases, are the clinics as well as the pharmacies. So in Malaysia, there are 2,000 community pharmacies in the country, throughout the country, and these are there to serve the general public. The customer must be able to ensure that every package they pick up has got what we call a registration number, okay? This is called a number that you must ensure that you can see is MAL uh, number and that is a registered product. And at the same time, it also carries a hologram. A hologram is that a product that will ensure that the product is being sold are not imitation products. They are not fake products, okay? And then of course, thirdly, the general public must also um, check on the expiry date of the product and at the moment too many of the product have also got the retail selling price so all this information are found on the packages and uh, the customers are now very well protected these patents are continually being monitored you know just because a, a product has a patent right doesn't mean that product for the next 20 years will be on the market without any um, restriction on the standard at all. The standards must be maintained and there will be regular checks by the Ministry of Health. If anything has turned colour or anything has an unusual smell, 
all this can be reported. And under the Ministry of Health, there's a strong um, there's a strong interest or strong standards of making sure that any adverse reaction, uh, ADR, adverse drug reaction, is reported. So any customer or consumer can bring the package to a nearby community, community pharmacy and the community pharmacist there will monitor all this what we call MDAP program. All right, thank you, Cairo, for that uh, in-depth uh, explanation on some issues. Let's talk about uh, the NKEA first. What kind of uh, drugs or medicines are we targeting to make generics out of? Uh, usually, when we look talk about generics, mm -hmm. it's usually products that are coming off patents. Mm -hmm. And when a drug is patented, they have a patent life of 20 years. Mm -hmm. So when the patent is expired, uh, they lose the patent protection mm -hmm. so any companies can produce a equivalent product mm -hmm. uh, so-called generics mm -hmm. but it's not that simple uh, your premises need to be approved by the Ministry of Health right. the standard that you make to need to be approved and the dossier that means the the application uh, require a lot of information mm -hmm. how you come to develop this product right. whether this product is equivalent to the originator mm -hmm. and we have to conduct not only chemical tests mm -hmm. like the dissolution test, mm -hmm. making sure that both dissolve at the same rate, right. but we have to actually do it in human, right. what we call a bioequivalent test. Right. That our product are when consumed in human form, mm -hmm. they they are the same. Right. So we have to do it uh, in a, in human, right. test it in human, right. and make sure that our product that we develop is right. the same. Only with all this information, then. The ministry would, would, would approve us would to approve. put it on the market. Now, those products are called generics right. because they are uh, uh, produced after the patent right. has expired. But basically, the R&D, the research done, is as if like it's a brand new drug, right? Yes. It's the only part that we don't do mm -hmm. is the development of the chemical entity, mm -hmm. right? The rest is all the same. Right. We have to do stability tests. Right. We have to do the full dossier. Mm -hmm. Uh, the manufacturing process mm -hmm. in great details right. and uh, the uh, packaging, uh, the bioequivalent test and all the in-process quality control that we need to do mm -hmm. and the final product testing. So actually it's a very comprehensive uh, requirement by the Ministry of Health right. and Malaysia is very stringent mm -hmm. because Malaysia, you know, we are part of the PICS mm -hmm. which is similar to the European standards. Right. So our product that we made in Malaysia mm -hmm. are actually equivalent to the European standard right. and therefore it's actually very high standard. Right. So the generic product in Malaysia are of very good and high standard compared to many countries in the world. Okay. Because not many countries are actually, uh, there's only like 25 to 27 countries in mm -hmm. the world which are PICS right. and Malaysia is one of them. But with all, we, we are trying to produce generic drugs. Who are our target markets? Who or what are our target markets? I think generic drugs are for mass market. Right. Of course, when a product is patented, the price are obviously very high mm -hmm. because they have uh, uh, no competition. Mm -hmm. But when the patent is expired, mm -hmm. maybe there will be a, more than one generic players. Mm -hmm. Usually there are more. Right. Uh, so when there's competition, the price automatically will come down. But right. in the US, for example, right. uh, within one year of patent expiry, right. the price will have dropped to 30%. Mm -hmm. Maybe within two years, it will be less than 10%. Right. So when the price drops and the, the quality is the same, mm -hmm. the consumer are the ones that are benefiting uh, from the low cost. Right. And they can access to lower cost of uh, health care. Right. Yeah, so it's for the masses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a short break and uh, when, we when we continue, we'll continue talking about uh, generic drugs with Mr. David Ho on BizDoc. The generic medicine in our country is less complex.